Okay, right now, if you are showing symptoms of depression, there are a range of treatments that you may be offered, including CBT, therapy, mental health apps, counseling, TMS, meditation, SSRIs, etc. But usually, you will not be offered to take some relatively high-dose psychedelic drugs and trip yourself back to happiness. No, not usually. But soon... Not by my doctor, at least. <laughs> <laughs> soon, however, you might be. So there's a place <gasps> called the Centre for Psychedelic Research at Imperial College London. And they have compared, done a study comparing just two doses of the active ingredient of magic mushrooms, psy psilocybin, with a six-week course of antidepressant called acetalopram on 59 people with moderate to severe depression um, to see basically what happened. Like they they had there is some precedent for this. They're not just like lol. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I love when I love when science experiments look like it's just let's just do this and see what happens. Like <sighs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, there is precedent for this. I mean, not only have there been past studies into into psychedelics for use in mental health, but also there is sort of um, anecdotal evidence, right? So there's like magic mushrooms have been used for thousands of years in tribal settings, religious and spiritual settings. They're used as a rite of passage from childhood to adulthood mm. in some settings, and they're also used to contact gods etc or that's the belief ring ring Hello. ring ring pick up i've got a mushroom <laughs> <laughs> and one study in 2006 uh, showed that half of participants stated that their mushroom trip was the single most spiritually significant experience of their lifetimes um you may you may have heard sort of anecdotally as well that's uh, a similar sort of message said by steve jobs with a different psychedelic as he said that um taking i think lsd was one of the most significant um, spiritual moments of his life uh, on par with going to India and sort of spending time with all the shamans and sort of traveling traveling around. Can we <laughs> prescribe a free trip to India on the NHS? Well, what do you mean trip to India? <laughs> mm, there's two ways to get there. There's two ways to get there. <laughs> I feel like an LSD trip is much easier than, in, than an India trip. You could do that from your living room. Much easier... Uh, logistically, yeah. I guess if you have a if you have a source for these drugs, yeah, <laughs> a sauce, you just pour out <laughs> <laughs> LSD sauce. <laughs> anyway, after being part of the hippie movement movement in the 1960s, magic mushrooms and a lot of other drugs were outlawed in the U.S. and by extension, as we know with U.S. drug policy, the rest of the world sort of did the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it was classified as a Schedule One drug, which means that they have, quote, no accept accepted medical use in the United States. A uh, little bit of a problem if you're wanting to see if there's um, an accepted medical use, because basically yeah. it means that doing research on these things is incredibly difficult. But these restrictions have slowly been loosening. Like I said, there was a study in 2006, and this has slowly been happening. And now to the point where a major university, or a couple of major universities in London actually, are doing studies on them. So, how do you guys think mushroom therapy would work? Like, have a guess. What do you think it would look like? I think... Wait, I think I actually know, though. Oh, okay. So should you I not say? Not you, you take a lot of mushrooms, and you... Probably multiple times, actually. Okay. Is it like a scheduled... Take mushrooms now, now, now. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. Take them all now. Down to the whole place. As much as you can. <laughs> Look, just walk through a forest and pick up and eat as many as you can find. Doesn't mm -hmm. even matter if they're, if they're magic ones. Just go for it. <laughs> the okay. Said, okay. Crucially, first, your first point, Jamp, there. No. Okay. Um, it is not take a load of mushrooms. So they receive an oral dose of the active ingredient of magic mushrooms, psilocybin, in a right. capsule. Crucially, it is not just take a magic mushroom because there's lots of things in a magic mushroom it's not mm. just the active ingredient you just want the bit that helps just that yeah well that's just the one bit medical science loves isolating um the specific thing because it's more predictable more um well cory right the whole thing with um with science and medicine is that you want to understand exactly what is uh making the change mm. so if you've got a lot of different um ingredi ingredients you don't know which one is specifically um interacting with the body for example um and it could be complex interactions so if you if you manage to get it down to one specific ingredient then you know which one you need to need to use you know which one has the effect thank yeah. you cory um so they they do this in a special kind of clinical setting well they they described it as a specialist clinical setting um but later on described that as lying on their back propped up by pillows oh. so they're basically in like a lab bed mm -hmm. um they listened to i love this. this this is so like psychedelic they listened to a specialist music playlist <laughs> designed specifically for the study um and that was described as emotionally evocative neoclassical music 
Um, I think you'll all join me in politely mm. requesting Imperial College London to drop their Spotify playlist. <laughs> 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 and they were guided by psychologists and psychiatrists. So they have this twice. So Jamp, you were asking once, maybe twice. Uh, they have this twice, three weeks apart. They take 25 milligrams of psilocybin each time. And they're comparing these two drugs. The other one is um, acetalopram. And in that case, they're taking acetalopram for six weeks. And basically what they found, uh, this guy called Dr. Robin Car Hart Harris found that these, these drugs basically work in two different ways. Um, the acetalopram is basically working to kind of numb your emotions. They call it emotional blunting. So you're better able to deal with stress because the stress doesn't feel as sharp basically. But it also means that there's a side effect of like uh, anyone who's been on antidepressants might have, might have experienced this. Everything kind of feels a little bit numb and a little mm. bit blunted. Um, now with psilocybin therapy, uh, the suggestion was that basically this was a release of thought and feeling. That was the quote. Um, and the psilocybin group had reported feeling that they got more fully to the root of why they were depressed, as opposed to just feeling like they're not, even though they may be still have the propensity to be um, depressed. Mm -hmm. They said they felt recalibrated, reset like they haven't for years, and enjoying life. Now, they and the antidepressant group, um, both groups were given therapy. They were given um, standard qu questionnaires, like depression questionnaires, um, which I think rate you about out of about 30. Um, Corey's nodding. We've all been there. <laughs> um, they rate you have about 30 to sort of get a subjective measure of how you're feeling. Uh, now, both groups showed a similar drop in depression. So there wasn't any statistical significance between how um, effective it was at actually reducing depression. But the mushroom group got better quicker. 57% of the psilocybin group were then in considered in remission compared to 28% of the antidepressant group. So this is like potentially double at least within a few weeks double the remission rate of depression mm -hmm. very not, exciting and also you actually feel good and not just like yeah you feel to nothing me, to me this sounds like right let's say you've got a wall that's covered in graffiti and like and like it's 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 kind of it's a crumbly graffitied wall right it seems like the antidepressants are okay let's just paint over all the graffiti right paint over all the cracks it looks it looks shiny and new again mm -hmm. And the mushrooms are, let's knock down this wall and build it up again. Mm. And we've got a nice strong wall. Or let's talk to the people who are making the graffiti and maybe ask them to stop and give them something to do. <laughs> Please <laughs> do something else. <laughs> that also, sure. Um, so the mushroom group also had less cases of dry mouth, anxiety, drowsiness, and sexual dysfunction. The most common side effect they felt was a headache the next day. I think that's a small price to pay for. <laughs> fixing your treatment-resistant depression. Yeah. Um, the head of Psychedelic Research Center said that the results were tantalizingly suggestive of a potential superiority in psilocybin therapy. Obviously, this is uh, big news because it is a Schedule One drug that was classed as having no medical use. It's almost like some laws are silly. Um, and uh, they also scored higher on work. And there, so there are, other, there are other effects. Aside from like just the, what they were targeting, there were sort of ancillary effects, like effects outside of what they were studying, um, that they scored higher in work and social functioning, mental well-being, and the ability to feel happy, which I think is kind Ooh. of the point. It's the aim, isn't it? Yeah. The aim of the game. Being able to feel happy seems pretty cool to me. I don't know. That seems, <laughs> yeah, that seems fun. I <laughs> hope, but you know, if it's possible. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean that this is definitely the solution or that we're definitely there. Now, can either of you spot any problems with this study, just from the, the information I've given you so far? Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Okay, first one, small well, sample size. I was going to say, is, is it a small sample size? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the, I mean, it depends on how sure they are, you know, like what the degree of certainty is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's strong and compelling, but again, small sample size. The second one is that this is a phase two clinical trial. Do you know about the different phases of clinical trials? I do know about the different um, phases of clinical trials. Do you want to, or shall I go? You can Please go. someone explain it to me. <laughs> Please don't make, this, this, this feels like an oral exam in uni. Do you know the phase two, phase two of the clinical trials? Mm. I do, yeah, do tell you? me. Well, mm. it's just because I know about the phase two of cl phase two clinical trials because I've researched it like today, whereas you probably have a long-term understanding <laughs> of how clinical trials work. <laughs> so uh, any opportunity to throw it to you, Corey, I'll take it. Um, but basically, this is a exciting because it is progressing. So about 30% of drugs will go from phase two to phase three. Um, uh, but it also means that there are other, other stages to get through. It's also one of the big problems is often in clinical trials, or one of the main things you'll want to do is you'll want to do like blind studies. You want to give someone the drug and then give someone a placebo and tell them whether, and, and not tell them which one they've had and see if they have any kind of like, um, 
remission anyway, like a psycho- psychosomatic um, effect. Like just thinking they've been given a drug makes them feel better. Now, what uh, what our guy who ran this study said was, it's pretty difficult to blind people as to whether they've received a large dose of psychedelics. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd be able to tell. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> you either know or mm. you haven't done a large okay. dose of psychedelics here's, here's what we do right here's what we do we we give some people a sugar pill right and we give the other ones the mushroom pill and we sit them both down and make them watch alice in wonderland <laughs> and then they, they definitely won't know you know or the therapists like dance around them going <laughs> wobbly lines and things uh the other thing is that there was no group that was given a placebo um and no group that was given just therapy um, so uh, you can compare that to other, like the success rate of just therapy mm-hmm. to a certain extent, mm-hmm. um, but that was not done within the uh, within this this study. Also, the majority of participants were participants were white, middle aged, highly educated, and male. Um, Gosh darn. darn it! And so yeah, there's no like who knows there may mm-hmm. be other other things. Finally, the last thing I'd like to say before I finish up this story is the authors would like to clarify. This is a quote. Patients with depression should not attempt to self-medicate with psilocybin as the team have provided special clinical and therapeutic context for the drug and a regulated dose formulated in a laboratory condition. Taking magic mushrooms or psilocybin in the absence of these safeguards might not have a positive outcome. Mm. And that's what you at home need to take away from that. Well, also that it's mm-hmm. very exciting. Mm-hmm. Don't try it at home. It's very exciting though. Don't. Very, Don't try it. No, no. Very exciting. You guys are giving mixed messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look, the, the, this, this news is very exciting news, but also that doesn't mean that you should go ahead and try it at home. Just like, oh, this is a good painkiller? Great, I'll get some poppies and I'll make it myself. Don't do that. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs> <laughs>